By now, you've probably heard my magic wand story. It's a brand that's been part of my personal journey for more than 20 years. But no matter how many times I sing magic wands praises, I'll never be able to fully capture the story of this incredible brand. Well, now journalist and author Kate Sloan just completed a limited audio series documenting the history and impact that Magic Wand has created over the last 56 years. It's called Making Magic. And the series chronicles Magic Wand's incredible brand story through interviews with nearly 40 experts, performers, business owners, educators, and fans. So I got a sneak preview of the series. And what I loved is that Kate weaves together snippets from all their interviews into this amazing story arc. She covers Magic Wand's journey from a appliance store massager to its legendary influence on culture and sexual independence. And it's all just fascinating. The first episodes of Making Magic are available now at makingmagicseries.com or on all popular podcast platforms. Just search for Making Magic or visit makingmagicseries.com today. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily on today's show. Fun summer date ideas for couples and singles. If you think summer is just for lovers, think again. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. Check out our website, sexwithemily.com, because you can easily subscribe there. You can subscribe to iTunes. We have a great menace. I'm here with Menace. Hi. What up? What's going on? How are you? Good. What are you saying about iTunes? I listen to everything that you tell me. Uh-huh. So now, if you go to my website, there is a subscribe mm-hmm. thing on the yeah. banner. But now when you click on it, you can download it on Google Play, SoundCloud, and then you can also listen on Spotify and, of course, iTunes. Nice. Yeah, dude. The more it places it's available, it's I know. Awesome. And we already got ranked in all these places. It was just like a few cool. weeks. Because I just, I want people to easily be able to digest podcasts. Yeah. Our podcast. Um, and also, I appreciate everyone following me on snapchat twitter and instagram which is all at sex with emily and i was menace i Mm -hmm. i was like i just follow me it's fun it's a good time but then last week you mentioned the the bikini shot yeah so if you haven't heard and people no but now there's more (laughs) shots oh there's more shots well let's let's recap real quick so the one of the last shows that i was on with you I mentioned that you finally put up a bikini pic on your Instagram, which is Instagram.com slash sex with Emily. And I just slightly, you know, mentioned that, that it finally happened for all you listeners that have been waiting for years and years and years. There is a bikini photo available again at Instagram.com slash sex with Emily. And apparently people were really into that. They listened and they went there and you said, hi, that's fun. Yeah, Yeah, that was funny. But now I'm going to have a picture of me in a muzzle um, on the mic. In a, Maybe. Oh, yeah. So that's my thing. So I've been doing I, the show with Emily for 10 years. And, and it's not just me because she always thought that I was a jerk and I'm just making this up. And it was all hocus pocus. But to get Emily to talk directly on the mic is the whole time. freaking It's mad, hard because maddening. I move around. I yeah, forget yeah. the mic's here. But so I'm like leaning like, over. My hands are talking. Yeah. If you hear if you hear the beginning, <laughs> if you hear the beginning of the drunk podcast, which you can look up the, be- <gasps> the very We're beginning, doing that every day now. Yeah. The very beginning of the drunk podcast, um, you hear the frustration of me trying to explain to Emily to talk directly onto the microphone. Right. But I would love to put together a muzzle microphone for you. That but just like get. my face is just attached. I like, yeah, can't yeah. move. I can't look left. I can't look right. Yeah. I'm just in, in, in. And uh, we'll take a picture of that and put it up on your Instagram. Yeah, so. that's awesome. But I was saying also that Anderson was here. We do some mm-hmm. shows with Anderson and, and he was saying the same thing so, so see alone. it's not just me i know i hear cool. you dude. i hear you um and also okay one more thing when you're there subscribe to our mm-hmm. newsletter because we we do give good newsletters and i think that's what i have to own oh, facebook.com slash sex with emily yeah about to hit a million followers yeah i feel like we should have like a facebook that, party and huge. then do the facebook live thing so that's what i really want to get you on next so um you have your own office space you can definitely set that up here 
Um, we have a rocking new studio. It's banging. Yeah. We should take pictures of that and put that up. Do on it. Instagram. Because they're so, kind of killer. Go ahead. Oh, so I hear rumblings that we talk about Vegas too much. I can't help that I'm just in, in my. They're like, oh, we open up every show, man. It's going to Vegas, and you're da da. And I'm like, wh- I don't what know. do you want what me to do? That I go to Las Vegas. Okay, how about this? This weekend I'm going to Mexico. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, I think so. That's fine. That's a little different, a little variety in your life. I'm sorry. Dude, and no, then I don't a- after know. I go to Mexico, I go to uh, Vegas, Vegas <laughs> again. So <laughs> what are you doing in Vegas? No, what are you doing? I'm going to do? UFC 200 in Vegas, but I'm going to uh, Revi- yeah, Riviera Maya. Oh, that's awesome, yes. my, uh, Maya Tulum. You're yep, flying by to Tulum. Ca- that's yeah, great. It's gonna be fun. Like a romantic vacation with your girlfriend. Um, just a fun vacation. We don't do romance. Romance is so cheesy. I was going to have rose petals delivered to your room and, and uh, sprinkled on your bed. We would have barfed and knocked them off the. I think maybe that's why you need them, but that's good for a week or something. Uh, no, just a couple of days. So today's mm-hmm. show, summer. Why summer is a great time for sex, for dating, for love? Because you okay. And I started thinking about this menace. All you California people born and raised like you and yes. like Madison, Lori, like literally all my friends and everyone who works here, you're like big effing deal. It's the same. I got a job. <laughs> Why do I care about summer? But let me tell you a little story, okay? For mm-hmm. most of the world, we have this thing called winter. Oh, what? And we even have snow. No. <laughs> and I grew up in Michigan where it was, you know, you get like 20. Mm. So for college, for example, yeah. my prime dating years, you know, when I go there and it's like you... It would be like, you know, 20 inches of snow for like six months where I couldn't uh-huh. find my car. Yeah. I would have to walk to school like down these like streets that they just dug tunnels underneath and I'm wearing mm. layers of clothes, right? And it's freezing all year round. But then summer comes along. It's like May, right? Yeah. On campus. And it's like the first day of summer, snow is melting and it's like 60 to five degrees and yeah. everyone's outside. Because all summer long, winter mm-hmm. long, you don't see people. You're like rushing by mm-hmm. with like, I've got like masks on. I've yeah. got like, like long underwear. Not Sounds sexy. Pleasant. <laughs> you don't meet anybody. And then yeah. there's this one day every year and you're outside, you're like, wow, like the sun is shining and everyone looks so cute. Like the guys are in shorts, uh-huh. the girls are in sundresses. You're like, where have these people been? Oh my God, I'm so, and you just feel good because the, you know, the sun Mm -hmm. is good for your like serotonin, it's good for your brain. Yeah. And everyone just is happier when it's summertime and you, you have, the days are longer. But isn't, isn't there like a term they use on the East Coast or something like that where people hug up for the winter or something like that? Yeah, like people shack up for the, yeah. Oh, like like the um, the winter boyfriend or something. Yeah. And then they're single in the summer. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. This shows all about why I, and I started thinking about it, like, it is great to be, you know, single in the summer because there's so many more fun things to do. We're outside. We just mm-hmm. feel better about ourselves. We're like exercising. We're yeah. ta- we like have friends or like having barbecues, like, and being outdoor, like the weather does make a difference. Like that really does impact. And I just wanted you all to know that all you California people, cause I am a California person now that we've suffered and there's a lot of people like, it's a huge thing. Yeah. Oh, well. They should just come to California. <laughs> I know. We're really lucky, though. I just want to tell you about my suffering and why it still is a big deal. Well, you love it here now, right? Totally. Has it helped it. you, though, in the summer to date? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, even living in California, okay? I'm saying mm-hmm. that it's it's just, it is true. Like I, And also, I feel that this is, I feel like there's a huge fight in America. I feel like we all really want to just stay on the couch most of the time. I think that yeah. that's the pull. Like if we have a choice usually, even if it's a fun party, we're like, but I really just want to stay home and watch Netflix. That's the easy mm-hmm. thing. That's the, the default. And in the winter, you can do that or when it's not as warm. But this time, like everyone's having parties and people are inviting you to things or you can have people over, go for walks, do things like that. And it's just, there's just more opportunity to be social. And I find myself sometimes even having to push myself. But I realize lately when I do go out, I'm always glad that I that I do, and especially just the last even the last few weeks because it's been warmer here and at night that mm-hmm. I, I've met a lot of people, and it's just that I don't, I've met a few guys, and I feel like every time I do it, so I'm just trying to urge people to like I don't want to go out a lot, but I do it, and I actually am always glad that I do, and just get off the couch uh-huh. from people because it's just it's th- that person's not going to just like drop down your chimney. Uh huh. Well, and then also, a trip to Vegas never hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, no, it's that's funny because so, okay, so you need to I, hook okay. up with some guy. Not, don't talk about me, someone in your hometown who also likes yeah. outdoor music festivals uh-huh. in the summer, who also likes going to those, you know, the yeah. summer concerts. Like everyone has like park, you know, somewhere mm-hmm. in the park or Shakespeare in the park. Like even if you don't freaking like Shakespeare, yeah. like sit outside with your friends and have a bottle of wine. Like do that. That's where mm-hmm. people are. Look and, at you pushing the the relationship, like meet up. I'm saying for long term. Yeah. 
I dating. do nothing about going to Shakespeare in the Park. Am I saying you should be walking down the aisle? Yeah. I'm saying. I mean, dating. I want to go to Shakespeare in the Park to but save you, my life, but it's fun. <laughs> Uh, but you think I pay attention? So, I'm just like drinking and eating. Yeah, but if you want to go hook up and have some fun, go to uh, um, um, Disneyland. No, go, Thank go. God. So no, I just see you got me all tripping off the Vegas thing. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm talking sorry. about Vegas all the time. But then, I, <laughs> so I was just there recently, and then so the guy that I was um, hanging out with it was one of my coworkers. <sighs> he opened up Tinder and he just like swiped and like I serious, I caught it on video. Within 15 seconds, had a match. Yeah, no, it's true. It is the dating. The dating. And then apps one too. of my other coworkers went was walking to check out, right? And he was he was on the app, and then he got a match. Went back upstairs, got a blowjob, and then came back down. The, and, the person was in the hotel. <laughs> yes, and then checked out all within probably an well, hour. I don't understand. What did she get out of it? <laughs> oh, I don't know. This is just my thing. Like, I'm not saying a lot of women don't get pleasure. I'm sure it was yeah, a random yeah. hookup and it probably could have been very exciting for her. Mm-hmm. But I yeah. feel like women just like give out blowjobs and I was like candy. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't, don't. I'm just saying, that. did he go down on her for 25 minutes? Half hour? Done it. I didn't ask probably that. Probably not. Guys are there not interested minutes. in that information. Well, you know what? It's a great story. Hey, dude, did you go down on but her? Vacation like, hookups are very fun. I'm just, what? Vacation. I've just never been the like, <laughs> I'm going to give you a random blowjob girl because yeah. I know that it would blow their mind. <laughs> and I know that like I don't just give it to anybody like just friends people I yeah, know yeah. people I love I'm not just gonna like or people I am attracted to or <laughs> know more than five minutes yeah I give a killer boy job a- anyways I, I want to first <laughs> tell you what I don't do well and there's uh, like so many things that, yeah. that would take up the entire show but that I'm pretty confident All right. okay so we've got that we're gonna get more into okay. summer stuff because I've got some clever ideas for cool. you cool tell me uh, not yet we have to do sex in the news first. What are you, oh, why are you pushing? Why are you news? moving me along? You're being no, so, no, no. making me so anxious. My bad. Because I was not anxious today. Let's talk about Vegas more. Dude, I'm I want to go with you to Vegas. No <laughs> fucking joke. But no one will let me talk about it. Okay. Menace. Yeah. I have to talk to you about something. Tell me. Did you know that if you send dick pics, you're probably insecure? Um. Well, ha- I guess I'm not insecure because I don't send dick pics. Well, there's a new study and it says... While some of us enjoy the art of sexting, others' attempts at virtual foreplay come off more humorous than sexy, and others stay out of the game altogether. We've mentioned this in the past couple of shows. Somewhere we had a conversation. Who were we talking to? I don't know. I asked. It was I like know, in Vegas. Has, I think we were underneath yeah, the circus um, circus. We're in Vegas circus. at a buffet somewhere. <laughs> no, the thing was, um, I, uh, I asked, Can I has that going? ever... No, no, no. Oh, yes. And has like, that no, ever no. worked in the history of no. dick pics? I mean, was the a woman ever like, I'm on the fence. I don't know if I like yeah, him. I mean, yeah. he was really sweet. We had a nice and kiss. And then boom, there's a dick pic. He's dick like, pic. he's the next, he's my next husband. No, yeah, that doesn't no, I think maybe there was Never like pushes the a needle. 1% out there. Maybe. I think, I think you have a better chance of getting laid saying, hey, do you want to go see a movie tonight? Just, than hey. sending a effing dick pic. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, but there's more dick pics. There's All right, more tell than me dick more. pics to the story. I need story. to know the science. Okay. Behind dick so pics. they studied college, college students, where uh-huh. it's all going down, about their sexting habits, how they behaved in their romantic relationships, including how scared they were that their partners were going to leave them, and how much they feared their partners weren't happy with them, and how stressed out they were about dating. And their sexting reflected that. Mm. So... People who send sexts, nudes, pictures of video or and videos of themselves in lingerie and other suggestive photos, uh-huh. i.e., dick pics, um, felt less secure in their relationship. God damn right. Right. So they're doing that's, that to like get their. How partner, much do they sp- whereas, waste money on that study? That's obvious. Right. Even it doesn't even just, have to be sexually lingerie. It can be the constant effing selfies that people put out on the internet. Because they're insecure and they need people, to, you know, to say, "Oh, you're so good looking," and make them feel better. Is that wrong? Because I actually themselves. wanted to take a selfie right now and uh, put a lot I of mean, on it. No, no, no. I no, mean, I I'm looking saying. at your Instagram. It's not like that. I'm saying, I'm but kidding. I there's get There's some it. girls that are. Like I agree. Five a day. No, I know. I know. It's a yeah. whole thing. But what I'm saying is, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because let me continue. Um, avid sector, a- avid sexters, mm. sex with the goal to attract or keep a partner. Yeah. And they, those people also, you know, mean they have fewer walls up. And so they're like, I'm hey, I'm going to send you my, you know, penis. So feeling insecure about a relationship may be unhealthy, but sexting in a relationship is actually mm-hmm. very healthy. So if you're in a relationship with somebody 
it actually can help improve your relationship. You they show studies show that people who sex with their partners um, mm-hmm. more often, and they can send the dick pics and laundry if your partner would like that. Mm-hmm. They have sex more off um, more often. They have more motivation. They're more inspired. So you know it can help within a relationship. But if you're in a relationship that's unstable, needy, or you're just dating and you're randomly sending you know scratch shots, yeah, might not go over well for you. We're getting pictures taken of us right now. Blowjob spray. Madison, what kind of pictures are you taking? Probably terrible um, photos of me and awful. And- <laughs> yeah. So, so what, 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 here's the takeaway from this study okay. is that, um, again, and I'm not going to say that just women give out, men do things too sexually. I was talking about the blowjobs earlier, but I do feel like there is this thing that, that women and men think, well, if I send this photo, I do this thing that they're going to like me more. And I just think, you know, why why show all your cards at the beginning? Like what, why mm-hmm. do you need to like be sending all this stuff to get, just to have the person like you get to know you in person, whatever. And then like when you're dating, it's great to send something like that. Mm-hmm. But I just think that just randomly sending them out to the guy you met at the bar and then you get home and you're drunk and you send a sexy photo. I'm not sure if that's doing for you, except for saying that, Hey, you know, yeah, you're kind of implying, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm easy. And then you might do the, thing where he goes oh yeah this girl is easy and then he'll be like super aggressive just trying to get into your pants and you're like wait a minute that's not what i want you know right i'm just saying why lead with sex if you don't have to and i'm not like a puritan okay i'm not saying that i didn't feel like you said that was sex we've been married for 10 years it happens i'm just saying that if that's not what you you don't want someone just to be thinking i mean we're already thinking that the reason why you probably gave the person your number is because you're gonna bang at some point Mm -hmm. but like you know like we have like build up have some appetizers first yeah that's what i'm saying I feel you. You feel? Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, that's all I got for Sex and News because we Why? got a lot of good stuff today to cover. It's What's a, it's happening? Like Tell me full. everything. Single for summer. All right. Um, that's that's really important. You're single for the summer. Dude, I'm single for the you need to go on century. A, you need to go on a world <laughs> tour. I'm actually on this whole new... You know, I really truly am inspired by, by you know, living in LA. It took a little while to kind of get... My groove going. I moved here. Mm-hmm. Work has been so busy. Yeah. When you moved here, and you had a girlfriend. Like you were like you had your U-Haul of clothes, and then you had your girlfriend next to you in the car. Yeah. Like that's like you're done. Mm-hmm. But I moved here. I picked up and I had a few friends here and there. But you know, my, I moved here for sex with Emily, and it's been amazing. But I wasn't like out. It's hard to do mm-hmm. it all, right? And so yeah. now I'm like in this place where things are good. We're sitting here in our studio, and I'd like to you know start to go out more and meet people. And so there's a if lot you want to go out with summer. Emily, hit her up on Instagram. Yeah. Sex with Emily. I have guys that hit me up on my Instagram trying to, hey, put in a word for Emily. I'm like, go hit up Emily yourself. Like, what the F do you want me to do? <laughs> really? They do? Or are you yeah. like, you don't want to go down that road? No, I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, save dude. yourself some trouble, bro. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but I'm into it. And it's funny because yeah. I was also with a friend last night and she was like, you know, all my, here's, a, here's something I need a name mm. for. Because obviously online dating, if you are single right now and you're like, yeah. I can't meet anyone, but I won't date online. I just think that's silly. To me, it's like saying yeah. I really want to lose weight and I've done everything out there. You know, like I I eat, I cut back on what I eat yeah. and I'm not drinking soda anymore, but I won't exercise. I won't. And it's like you got to do it all. Um, also, I, I you de- haven't done everything if you don't act, if you don't move your body. I mean, you definitely have to do online dating because I think people I mean, at least in on the West Coast, people have become less and less approachable. Like, why is this person even talking to somebody in public? People are thrown off saying, okay, this person is weird. And it sucks because like, I don't know, 20 years ago, like everybody would be open to have a a discussion with a random person. But now like we're so effing shy. We have to talk through cell phones. Now that's true. I do believe that especially, you know, we're you know younger generation maybe who didn't ever have to develop any of those skills about talking that it is mm-hmm. harder but i do think that yeah so the dating online thing let me let me just close that is that mm-hmm. that bracket is that she was like well why don't you because i feel like i need to term all my friends like mm-hmm. four of my single girlfriends yeah they get on bumble they get on tinder they get on hinge and then like two two months later they're like i deleted all the apps i couldn't take it anymore <laughs> and then it's probably too much to i see them again and they're yeah. like I'm back on Bumble. Oh, and I'm like, what is this? I need a name for addiction. people who go off and they go back on. They go yeah. off and they, like, they literally like delete the app. And they. So I was so, like, you know what? She's like, but why don't you do it? And I'm like, well, I meet people, which I do. But I'm like, also, I haven't been looking. And I thought, you know what, though? Oh. Well, I am going to get into some re- things that I am mm-hmm. doing this summer that you all should do that, you know, I think that it's great opportunities to meet people. Why not just have a profile up? You don't yeah. have to get obsessed with it and crazy, do, but there could be people you wouldn't normally meet. I do want to ask all these people that are on these apps, what... What is your end goal? 
Like, so your friends, what is their end goal? Or is there... It depends on the friend. I mean, some yeah. of them just, most, I guess they like to get into relationships. They do? Yeah, they do. Like, you know, I think my guy friends more just want to get laid, but my, not all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it changes. I would say people want a relationship, but why are you asking? Because it seems like this end, because in a way it shoots itself in the foot because you're thinking, oh my God, there's all these people. But then that mm-hmm. whole um, bigger, better deal thing kicks in yeah. and you're like, this girl's amazing. I could mm. see her at the one. I walked mm. down the aisle. My mom's going to love her. But wait, oop, oh, another here's match. another one. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you really just have to decide what, what you want. And I think a lot of people date without knowing what they want. And mm. which I've done a lot in my life. Like, I think I just didn't know. And I think I, th- I knew what I wanted in a person, but it was like, I didn't, you know, I've never looked at it like I want the marriage and the, mm. the tra- traditional kids. But now I would like a partner, you know. Because yeah. I don't want people getting off these apps because it's, they're constantly just talking to too many people and it's taking up too much of their time. I want them to get off that because they've actually found somebody, you know? And then it's just, are you talking to all these people because you'd love the, the attention and it gives no, you something to talk about, you know, I or think, are you actually really truly looking for somebody? No, no, you know? they're looking for somebody. But I think what happens sometimes is, you know, there's no perfect science here. You go on a few bad dates. Mm-hmm. I think it can get overwhelming too. Like you get, and they're like, I'm just going to meet, you know, and then they just kind of get, but I think if you don't take it too seriously and get too caught up in it, like we get obsessed yeah. with text and just like check it every few Where's days your and see what happens. Let me find some. Oh my God. I've not been on my Tinder in Ooh, so long. Let me open it. But the point is she's like, why don't you do it? And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fire that bad boy back up. I don't even know if it's open. Jesus. Talking. I haven't opened it in so long. I can't, I'm not even logged in. Why am I letting you do this? Because it's so much fun. Dude, I want to see on. who's let me nearby. Just, no, because I, I never get to see Tinder. Oh my god! Now I'm, I'm authorizing it. it. Oh my god! This is like it. so dead. This is like the dead is that t- uh, it's coming up. I haven't seen this in years. Okay, this is happening because okay. what All I'm right. saying is putting myself out there. Yes, oh you're doing it right now. <gasps> He's cute. Oh jeez. Okay. okay, don't do anything. Wait, I swipe right if I like somebody. Uh no, this a guy's heart. a douche. No, he was cute. Now they're gone forever when you swipe away. I'm so nervous for you doing this right Hold now. Hold on, I'm checking. Don't. But worry. there you go. Sunset, some rainbows. Maybe I'll be going next. to South Africa with him. Uh, barf Madison how do I get rid of this one come here come here I've never tindered before let me see let me oh, see let me damn see damn it we, wait no I got it don't worry I'm so gonna find somebody okay fine you do that but um, right. the other thing is people are just in a better mood in the summer like mm-hmm. I feel like I, I feel like the longer days it's warm you don't have to worry about stuff There's you don't have to worry about you know, scraping uh-huh. off your car, you don't wear it wearing a jacket. Yep. You feel freer. It improves your mood. Vitamin D from sunlight, mm-hmm. major spike in serotonin. It's not just orgasms that give you a spike in serotonin. Um, and also like women, it says that we secrete, okay, so here's the deal. Not mm-hmm. only does it give you, you know, make you feel good, but vitamin D, uh-huh. spike in testosterone for men. Yeah. For women, they secrete a hormone that stimulates sex drive that stimulates their sex drive. So it's called MSH. So it's truly, like when they talk about seasonal affective disorder and all that stuff, this makes a difference. So we're feeling better. You're mm-hmm. going out there. You know, you're exercising more. Um, you'll feel better about yourself. And there was a match survey. And you know, match.com doesn't lie. I can do uh-huh. match. You want to get on my match next? I've yes. been on there in 16 years. <laughs> 73% of people find others more attractive during summer than any time of year. Okay, so don't blow this summer like sitting inside doing what you were doing all year round. Um, Women are more likely to respond positively Mm -hmm. to flirtation and give out their phone number on sunny days. This Mm -hmm. is all true. So how can you really take advantage of this summer? How can you seize this summer and make it like the sexy one, the sexiest one? Like what are you people going to, because I'm going to do stuff. I'm going to come in here uh-huh. every week. Menace, what are you doing to my Tinder? What? Nobody has my phone in their hand that okay. long ever, except for Madison, maybe. Cancel. Okay. Come on. Wait. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, Ask this guy if he like, wants to go like, to an outdoor right, concert. I found if he wants one to go to out of like 45. Who is he? Oh, and he matched with you. <gasps> How? Look. I haven't been out in a year. There okay, you go. okay, dude. What if I know he, him? He matched. He need match too. Okay, wait. Send message. Oh. I don't want to send a message. Yeah, you do. <gasps> he likes you. Oh, oh dude. Dude, see, not, I already hooked you up. There's your f- future husband. He's got a picture. I don't know what happened. I can't do this now. <laughs> keep keep going though, because yes. I, I won't do it. Mine right now. All right. Okay, so um. Free movies in the park. Do you ever go to those free movies here in LA? They're so fun. Uh, they have them everywhere too. They used to have them in San They look fun, but no. Because 
Um, they had, when um, you're like slightly overweight zero. sitting on the ground, effing sucks. Bring a comfy like chair. <laughs> Bring one of those lunch yeah. chairs. So music festivals, so many to go to. I mean, every town too is the country fairs. Mm-hmm. They've got the farmer's market. Always Hit like beach. beating people through friends though. Right. So that's why you should have. A, so here's the thing. I, mm-hmm. On Facebook, do you get invited to like a gazillion events on Facebook? You probably have a lot of friends on there. Yeah. All the time. And I think people invite you to things and I don't even often, I forget to look and look at those invites and be like, you know what? I met this person at a party a year ago. I know him through work. I'm going to actually go. I don't know any of their friends and I'm just going to bring a bottle of wine and see who I meet because you're right. One of the best ways to meet people, just like Tinder, what you're doing there, apparently I have some connection with them usually, right? Through Facebook. Oh, that's Hinge. That's Bumble, right? Oh, Bumble I haven't done yet. That's so... So that's what my friend was doing. On Bumble. She's on Bumble. And she was like, why aren't you on Bumble? Because it's, yeah, because I The women get to, this Bumble is the dominating app right now. I oh, think really? As far as swipe apps go, and Bumble is an app where they have it every city, that it's just, you match, you just have mm-hmm. to put your age your range that you're looking for, geographical mm-hmm. desirability. Yeah. And also, um, if you match, you both like each other, the woman has to send the message first. But she only has 24 hours to do so or he's gone. Oh, wow. However, one time you can extend it. I know this from my friends. You can get a 24-hour extension and then they're gone if you don't deal. So in a way, it puts the power back in women's hands who feel like maybe there's a lot of people reaching out to them that they're not into. So Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like it. Dude, my hand hurts. There's so many douches on here. There's nobody good. You didn't match anybody? Just that one? Just that one guy. Should I get on my hinge? See, I'm way more picky. Let's set up my bumble after. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think that you're right. It is. I've met most people I've met either just, I've met them just out and about. My last boyfriend I met like looking for apartments. But typically it's through friends of friends. Even if it's like an event that a friend is throwing. Like there's, you know uh-huh. what I mean? You're like like-minded people. You'll meet yeah. at parties and stuff. But if there's something like that you've always wanted to do in your town, you're like, like last my last summer was the Hollywood mm-hmm. Bowl. I was like, I've not been to the Hollywood Bowl. Like, and so you know, I went mm-hmm. to a concert there. So like, have your personal it's bucket great. list of what you want to do online. Every city has its like, every city has something. Site no matter that tells how small you everything. your town is. And then if you you're like, yeah, but no mm-hmm. one will go with me. Find a friend right now and like have them hold you accountable. You can't just leave stuff open ended. Like, oh yeah, we should hang out sometime. Make a date and time. It's true you know? for everything in your life. And so I, I, I work on that. And so I'm doing that now. We, we And we did make a date for the, another drunk podcast. We did. We did. And the th- thing is, again, um, I've met the, some of the coolest people in the most random places. Like where? Like the laundromat. Uh, my my, my uh, coworker um, met his wife at the grocery store because he wasn't afraid to... He pretend that he didn't know anything about fruit. Oh, which one do you think is would be the best? Blah blah. blah. And then they stroke they striked up a conversation, and they ended up you know dating. And then he did the pretend I don't know about fruit thing. Yeah, and it worked. Like and they were are married these mangoes for, ripe? And they were married for years. Really? You know? That's a good stuff. It's that easy. And then it again, is that easy. No one because no one really does talk to anyone anymore. No, they don't. And especially uh, extremely attractive women because people are so. Guys are so shy to talk to them. Is that too. what's happening? Why no one's talking to me? Yeah. Just kidding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it, it is goes true. for guys. You know? But the like, other thing is your body. Here's the deal. It's like your body language too. When you're out, are you on your phone? Are you open to like, you know, meeting people? Are you like, look mm-hmm. like, just think of it this way. It's kind of like a little meditation. When you leave your house next time, just to go like, I don't care if you're picking up your dry cleaning, you're going to the coffee store, you're going wherever. Staples. I love Staples. Office mm-hmm. supplies. Just say, you know what, I'm going to leave my phone in my bag and I'm going to, uh, or wherever, in my pocket, and I'm just going to like, for the next hour that I'm running these errands, I'm not going to look at my phone or I'm sitting in this, wherever I'm going. And just like, see what happens. You're going to have to like, make eye contact, look around. And your body language will be much more open rather than being like, hunched over. And I realize that even though I'm always telling people, we've done, you know, a lot of dating tip shows, but that, you know, that's why it's important to make commitment to do things. Because if you go out, for example, like during the week, you're like, but I always like I go to a different lunch place for work every day or my coworkers and I go out and do. No, you're in work mode then. Like you're you're also rushing around. You got that tense, you know, maybe you're you know late, whatever. But on the weekends or when you have an intention of going out with friends, like you put your phones away and you like make yourself just more open and available rather than mm-hmm. like if you're like, oh, I never meet people, but I work all the time. Well, this is like when you're out, make that I'm the here. I'm putting my phone away. I know you're not because you're going to take selfies. But most of the time, just make yourself like your body language, look around, smile. Mm-hmm. Huge. Huge. Who smiles? 
Nobody. Say hi. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? I just I realized that you. too because I was like, I'm You're at work events. Just, I don't meet people. You're and then just I'm telling like, everybody, put yourself out there. Right, okay, I'm done. So nothing, nothing bad is going to happen to you. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Okay, do you, um, how do you feel like reading emails right now from the people? I love hearing from the people where they're from, how they listen to the show, and what their age is. And they don't have to say the real name if they don't want to. And you know what I love when we said, I I got a little upset. People weren't including their age. Yeah. All of a sudden people were like, hey, I sent you an email. Here's my age. Like they listen. Oh, cool. You listen, they. You. The listeners. Thank you you so much. Um, Thanks for emailing me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. And I'm excited to introduce a new feature. You can call and leave your question for me by voicemail. Oh, and yes. And if your message is selected, we'll play it on the show and I'll answer it live. So the number, 818-ASK-SWE1, that's mm-hmm. 818-ASK, as, as in sex with Emily, one, or 818-275-7931. Same, same. That's where I'm going to ask all the, my sex questions. Will you? I'm going to call and put on a voice. You should. I'm like, we're going to get masturbators, have a breathing. We're not saying you should. Um, and there's some ground rules on the website you can check out too with the number. What? Please don't. No. Oh, you're going to. That'd be actually funny if I didn't know it was you. If you were like an impersonator and then it yeah, was you. I, I don't want to give any voices. idea that there. No, be real people. We know if you're not real and we will cut you. Yeah. I mean, don't worry. And waste then your we're time. also going to take calls. Them. Right. Okay. I'm going to read evils. So thirsty. It needs a little blowjob spray. You stay thirsty. The thirstiest. Do- that means, that means like I can't get laid, right? No. Thirsty. Horny? Yeah, horny. I hate that word. I've never, yeah. I hate the I'm, word horny. I hate but thirsty. I, you hate thirsty? I don't hate it. Like, desperate thirsty, is that what it means? I have a match on <laughs> Tinder, dude. I'm not desperate. Hell yeah. Can you see if he wrote me yet? Okay. Write him. Just kidding. Okay. Dear Emily, I just started going out on a few dates with this new guy who my friend introduced me to. He's 28 and I'm 22. The six years age difference doesn't seem huge, but in my 20s, it still feels pretty far away. He's very casual, introverted, polite, and seems like a gentleman because he's only ever kissed me goodnight and never got handsy or anything like that. Mm. Somehow I feel like I want to take a different approach when it comes to dating because honestly, I kind of suck at it. Is there a recommended timeline that you go by when uh, getting to know someone new, like the sexual partners talk, religion, when he gets to see you drunk? I know, she's she's thinking a lot about how to date right. You know, she wants to do it right. And how soon is too soon to get in bed with him? And if I do, does the age difference mean that he is more mature about these sort of things? When does a 28-year-old guy, what does a 28-year-old guy expect from a 22-year-old girl, Jasmine from Peoria, Arizona. Jasmine, Arizona first of all, in the house. What up? We got peoples all over. I love it. I love it too. I love it. See, that man is so happy with uh-huh. Arizona to know that. Yeah. I feel so connected. F- um, she doesn't suck at dating. I think she, you're being very thorough, Jasmine. So don't mm. beat yourself up. We all, whenever we're trying something new, we all think we like we beat ourselves. It's so hard to get through those voices. They're like, I suck. Why aren't I better at this? You're 22. Mm. So no, you don't suck. And I like that you're being thoughtful about it. Yeah. Yeah. As, uh, what's your thing? You're like he's 28, she's 22. She wants to know what's it like. What's this guy thinking? Um, as a 20 year old man, it was easier to have sex. So you, you, as he might expect having sex sooner than maybe than you want, because I remember when I was 22, it was like, oh, we had a date for a while before we had sex. But by the time I was 28, it's like, oh, we have already been hanging out for. <laughs> A week, three day, right? You know, three days, two days. But do you whatever. think that's the age thing, or it's that things have times there are changing? Easier, I think also you become less shy as you get older of just putting out there on what you want, you know, or right. having the confidence to go and uh, do what you want. But what about twenty eight year? Like, but she's twenty two, uh-huh. so I think that like I think twenty two is much different than twenty. Right, exactly. But do you think that this guy's thinking, oh, she's. Like she's wondering what he expects of her. But what I think is we get this question all the time mm-hmm. from women and we get it from everyone. Actually, they, people want to know what is the recommended timeline? Like when should I sleep with them? When should they meet my parents? How, how many times a week should we having sex? People want all these numbers around yeah. sex to make them feel normal and doing the right thing. But I'm going to tell you the only right thing you can do 
is listen to yourself and what you what truly feels right to you in the moment. So I'm not going to give you like yeah. a magic number because it's different for every person in every yeah. relationship. If so you don't it, feel that you're ready to have sex yeah. with them, then don't have sex Do with them. Do not have but sex was with them. The, was, the, was the first question, did I hear that right? She says, when should I ask about number of sexual well, partners? I was going to get into that. That should be Dude, effing never. Never, exactly. I was like, okay, <laughs> never, ever. I see this is actually ever. a public service too. Honey, don't ever answer that question don't ever ask that question how many people have you slept with it means nothing it, it means does like nothing for you i mean it's like it's it it never serves you um i i don't think i think it is sort of a 20s thing maybe in terms of people keep asking it but it's like maybe you just lose count when you get older but the point is it doesn't matter because it's a lose-lose conversation because for women and again i'm going to be like i'm going to use some stereotypes here but mm. typically their number if it's too low the guy could think is she's going to be judged right people mm. are using that to judge they're never going high five yeah. it's going to be like you haven't slept with a lot of people or you slept with too many in your study like mm. no matter what that number yeah. is they're going to no one needs to know this and for guys oh he's a player oh i'm not experienced uh-huh. enough that's what the woman's going to think from his number and Oftentimes, you'll tell a partner, and then they throw it back in your face, and they like mm. you both, and they don't, they can't get it out of their head. Or a guy just and so what I'm thinks saying is, about penises. Yeah, all I used the to time. say this: if you say I've slept with eight guys, all he's going to see is like eight penises standing behind you now mm. when you're going down on them. I mean, I'm just trying to maybe it's just real. I'm that's trying to put the picture in your head that, that there's talk. that it's not this conversation doesn't get you anywhere, and it only elicits really like controversial emotions and feelings mm. in people. So what I suggest you do if someone asks you that question, ever you say, you know what? All I'm thinking about now is that having sex with you, which is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Done. The only time you should talk about your sexual past is if you have an STD or an STI. Let them know that. That's it. But also, she wants to know, like, you know, uh, alcohol-wise, when does she get sloppy drunk? And I like this because most people get Mm. sloppy drunk, many, on the first, second date. And I think if you can, it sounds like you've got a good head on your shoulders, you know, two drink minimum for you or one drink, whatever your limit Mm. is because... What happens is we drink a lot sometimes and we make poor decisions that we mm-hmm. might regret. Our inhibitions go down. We're like, oh, I'll just have a little, a little sex here and a little blowjob, whatever. Yeah. Which again, no judgment. If you feel great about that, and you're like, I was into it. Why not? I'm so great. Do that. Like do what feels good. But again, if you have a history of you wake up in the morning and you feel bad about it, I wouldn't recommend it. So I think just take this slow. You're going to know what feels right to you, Jasmine. You just will. And I'm not going to give you any rules here just just to uh, figure out what feels right. And the age difference, I don't know. He knows you're 22. I don't think that's I get in your mind it seems really old. But who cares? You know what? My my thing is, who the hell cares what he's expecting? Like, there is no, like, she's 22, therefore, Mm. da, da, da. No. Just be you. Don't worry about it. Hey, Emily, I love the show. 36, I live in the Chicagoland area. Sounds like Disneyland. Chicagoland. It's all one Mm -hmm. word. And I've been happily married for over 11 years. For the past, past few months, however, my thoughts have been on another woman. Oh, no. This woman graduated from the same high school class as me, and we initiated some friendly chit-chat in a Facebook group. Ah. Uh, Facebook. What's going dun, on da, da. with older people Dude, and Facebook? 20-year so, reunion. So scandalous. I've, I mentioned I this on the show. We have a lot of new listeners. But I had a really good friend, an amazing guy, married, Two kids, awesome house, awesome job, and his effing wife one day comes to him and says, I reunited with my high school boyfriend on Facebook, and I'm leaving the state to go be with him. I've heard this too. And I'm telling you, it's always the grass is always greener. It's enticing. It brings up all the old good memories. You never think of the bad ones on why you broke up with this person. Don't do it. I mean, if you have an amazing life right now, Stick with it. Stick with it. And, and just, then forget about this person. I know. Why destroy everything that you have for somebody that you're talking on Facebook with? Right, exactly. It's not worth it. Because Facebook is if you're looking at their life yeah. and they have everything you don't because the grass because is always greener. That life is edited on Facebook. They show you everything that's great and they tell you everything that's great on Facebook, not right. the bad things. And it's also just the titillation uh-huh. of like, you're with your, well, let me finish the story here, okay? okay? So, but it's part of it. Right. So he's in a Facebook group because it's a 20 year high school reunion. Mm-hmm. This went on for a week. They were flirting when, um, when she on more than one occasion mentioned how she was divorced, didn't have kids and was actively looking for the right guy. And the guy she described sounded a lot like mm-hmm. me. 
I realized I developed a, quite the crush. I decided I wasn't comfortable feeling this way about another woman, so I stopped talking to her. Good. For a couple weeks it worked, but then the feelings resurfaced, Ugh. and they are strong. Like I said, I'm happily married and love the sex when it happens, which is only like once every couple months. I'm See, still- that's why you're enticed by, exactly. enticed by the person. Dude. You should be focusing on what's happening in your relationship. You know? That's it, dude. That's it. This thing is just drawing you away. Who, dude, you know how many guys and girls are out there, you know? Doing it this. It doesn't matter. Right, exactly. There's a, you're going to have the same mm-hmm. issues and the same problems. Yeah. And this sexy, you know, cheerleader you went from high school is not going to, might not be having sex with you in three months mm-hmm. either. Like, I'm just telling you, there's issues with everybody, every relationship, but it's not even, you're not going to have sex with her anyway. But I'm just saying, we always think that it's going to be better, it's going to save mm-hmm. us, or it's a distraction from yeah. whatever we're not dealing with in our life. Yeah. Like, okay, but it also goes the other way. Let's say, let's say it's a totally different situation. Maybe you you have a miserable life and you you found somebody through Facebook. Then cut it off immediately with that person that you're with no because cheating. you only have one life. You only have one life. Why are you wasting every single day being right. with somebody that you don't want to be with? If anything, this could be like a great wake up call. But let's finish just real quick. The All right, sorry. But no, I'm getting Very excited passionate too. about this. I know, Facebook. Because I don't want like people messing up their lives for some, Honey, I, that's some exactly. shiny object online. Right, there's always going to be a bright, shiny object. There's yeah. always going to be something that seems to be more enticing, the bigger, better deal, mm-hmm. the better option that's going to give you everything, that hole, you know, that hole, that deep thing inside of you that can't be mm-hmm. filled. Guess who has to fill it? You. Mm-hmm. With love self-love and there's not gonna be anyone else that's gonna make you feel better than you already do now because you got to work on yourself and your relationship but that's a whole that's back to this so he's only having sex a few times a month and he thinks this has probably contributes to him thinking about the other woman i agree but i don't want to do anything that'll ruin my marriage so my question is how can i forget about the other woman i've never met her in person so if he didn't even didn't even know her in high school mm-hmm. knows her in the group so physically i haven't made i haven't uh made and won't make any mistakes i'm not okay with the idea of emotionally cheating i want to forget go back to my wife thanks for your advice keep up the great work jim so I think Jim sounds like a good guy because he caught mm-hmm. himself early. He's actually emailing saying that like, I don't want this to go on. Um, and I think you got to cut off all contact with her. Don't be friends with her on Facebook. Cease all conversation. And um, take all this energy that you've been like using to obsess about this woman on Facebook and channel it into the relationship with your wife. Yeah. And like heal that. Having sex every three months, not okay. I'm going to say mm-hmm. that number is not okay because couples need the intimacy like you need to be connecting on that level and like that's a number that's just like then what are you guys doing and have you talked to her about it um it's great to like whittle away hours on facebook of seeing what could be when you've got this relationship here that needs some repair and relationships are about repair they are about rebuilding all the time so it's okay um sexual frustration all this stuff that's why she's appealing so tell you to forget about her is every time you're thinking about her think of what can do i appreciate about my wife what can I do for my wife right now? And how can we work on this? Because um, if you don't take action now, there's going to be another woman, you know, who pokes you on Facebook. Yeah. P.S. People still poke on Facebook. Do you get poked? Do I? Oh, I don't even look at that. Right. Well, I don't either. But sometimes, no. But like, I'm not looking for pokes. But then when you go to your thing, it'll be like, so-and-so poked you. Not every day. Once every three mm-hmm. days. They still have the poke. Ready for another email? Yeah. Are you sure? Did you just want to? um... No, I'm done. Okay. Hi, Emily. I'm 24 years old and I've never been in a long-term supportive, genuine relationship. I would really like to be until someone comes into my life in that capacity. My goal is simply to meet and date people casually. I was overweight and had uh, terrible, terrible acne as a kid. So my confidence is shaky at best. This is my biggest issue when it comes to approaching and talking to guys I think are cute. I'm not into the bar scene. Don't know where and how else to meet guys. I'm worried if I'm not putting out the fuckable vibes, for lack of a better word. <laughs> um, and I'm 100% willing and able to. I won't get late. So she's willing to it, but she thinks that she's got to put out some certain vibe. What advice do you have for both meeting guys and striking up a conversation? Elena, iTunes subscriber, 24, from Texas. Nice. So I am not a, ter- a fan of the term like effable vibes. I'm not going to swear again on the show. Uh, <laughs> profanity is, is wrong. No. Yeah. I'm kidding. But if, if you're trying to like, if what you're saying, 
Elena, is that, you know, you're trying to put out there like, I want to get effed, you know, that's a whole bunch of different issues because that means that you want to feel desired right now, that you're not feeling like you're enough and that there's some way that you got to act or move in the world that's going to make you feel better about yourself. And that's not going to happen. The one, what you are talking about though is confidence and that's something you need to be able to put out there because in your mind, you still have these limiting beliefs that you'll always be the overweight girl with pimples and that everyone else is going to see you this way. And this is what's holding you back is that that's how you're still seeing yourself. And you're like, well, I got to put myself out there as like this sexy mm-hmm. woman. So you got to change the old, your own narrative and the story that you're telling yourself about yourself and how you build your confidence And so much of it has to do with those negative voices in your head. Those stories in your head that are like, guys don't like me. I'm not walking on like that, you know. And so, you know, and we don't even realize it until we think about it. You're like, wow, that's really negative, you know. And you can catch yourself in that moment. And this takes practice. But like in the moment, if you say something negative or you're thinking a self, you know, defeating thought, say something positive. Like, God, I'm. I'm really glad that I have, you know, these shoes, these great new shoes that are allowing me to walk to my car right now. Or, you know, I have this great friend I'm having dinner with. Like, be grateful in affirmations and also say good things. But what do you love about yourself? There's got to, we all have things that we don't like. That list is often longer than the things we recognize we love. But maybe you love your sense of humor. Maybe you love the way your, maybe you love the way your tongue can slide across your lips and you do this sexy thing. Smile to a guy. I yeah, don't but know it's, what it people is. always overthink things on yeah. everything. But but what I'm saying is, you, maybe you don't do this menace. Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever beat yourself up or have things in your head that like defeat? Like, what defeats your confidence? Do you think? Uh, what I mean, so many things. I mean, daily. <laughs> but how do you get over that? But mostly, you, you don't come. Across, so how do you move? Like when you hear those thoughts or whatever it is that makes you feel bad, what do you do? Uh, I, I think about everything that is good. And let me tell you this, an emotion, like a thought, it yeah. only lasts a minute and a half. But so many times we get caught up in it and yeah. it could, could take us down for days. Like, And this is all about practice. So, you know, you don't necessarily go, you don't need to go to bars for like the opportunity to meet mm-hmm. someone. There are single men everywhere. So again, this is about practicing, yeah. talking to people. And just that, the, just that skill of like having practice, um, having conversation, telling stories mm-hmm. with people that you're not necessarily like looking to have sex with is a skill that you build over time mm-hmm. and it's practice. So practice all of this stuff. There's a lot of single guys everywhere and just get comfortable talking to people. You're 24. You probably live in a very populated area. For some reason I was reading this email. I'm like, yeah. Madison, she's from El Paso and it doesn't say El Paso anywhere. Oh, really? And I don't know why. I don't even know where that is in LSD Texas. LSD trip. But I was like, are you in El Paso? <laughs> are you in so like, mushrooms? Also like, what are your hobbies? This is for everyone. <laughs> Do you read minds? Maybe you Dude, know. Dude, I'm like, she's in El Paso. Madison's like, where did you get El Paso? <laughs> um, and I'm like, you're right. Um, so find something that builds your confidence. Yeah. and uh, We can look her it. up. Just put her email in Facebook. I don't want to stalk the list. I'm just saying, maybe let's see if you're right. Oh, dude, we'll do that after the show for okay. sure. But anyway, Lena, I, I hope that, you know, I know that's helpful. So yeah. like, just, you know, you got this. Okay. Cool. Practice. Love it. This was good. I love it. It's always great being here with you. So great I, being with you too. It's, uh, we do appreciate the listeners. Thank you so much for listening. I hope everyone knows how much, like I... Like in my heart, like every day, this is when mm-hmm. I'm feeling, oh, you know, my car is broke down and my whatever is going on in my mm-hmm. life or I'm sad. I think I am doing like something that I've always, that I want to do and I love that I can like help people with their sex lives and that mm-hmm. I hear from you all and you're like, it changes your lives. Like I was out the other night meeting a fan who's like, oh my God, I listened to your breakup show and I finally had the curtain. So this is why mm-hmm. I do it. And so I love you all and I'm grateful and thank you for listening and telling a friend about the show and just, yeah. It's great. Grateful. Love you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Jamie. And thanks, everyone, for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com.